Hi guys, I'm Scott and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about receiving multiple POs at the same time or receiving POs by load. We'll do that when we come right back. Hi, I'm Scott and welcome back to the channel. Happy New Year to everybody. This is the first video of the new year. So I want to thank everybody for watching last year and uh, commenting and liking the videos helping the channel grow. I really appreciate that. I also want to apologize. I took an unintended vacation in December. I had a go live and just the holidays and everything caught up with me. So I didn't do our normally regularly scheduled updates on Tuesday, but starting today that will change and we'll get back on our scheduled Tuesday updates. So what we're going to talk about today is receiving multiple purchase orders at the same time. This is most often used when uh, you know perhaps you're over ordering for over from overseas, and you get a container in that's got uh, several POs on it. Maybe those POs are mixed together, maybe they're separated. But anyway, you want to um, tell the system I've got these POs and I'm receiving them all at the same time. So we do that in Dynamics 365, receiving by load. So the first thing what we have to do is we have to create a load and tell the system which POs are on this particular load. So let's take a look and see how to do that first. All right, so the first thing let's do, let's get the uh, lay of the land. So I've got two purchase orders. The uh, first one is uh, PO number 127. It's got two items on it, A0001 and A0002, both at a warehouse 24 for a quantity of one. And then I've got a second purchase order, uh, number 128, that has item A0002 and L0100, again, at a warehouse 24 and for a quantity of one. The, there is an item that's shared between these two POs, which is the A0002 number. Okay, so where we're going to go is I'm going to go into the load planning workbench to tell the system which POs are on my load. So I'm going to go into uh, to the warehouse management module. I'm going to go under loads and then the load planning workbench. Once again, the load planning workbench, I'm going to click on purchase order lines. Those are the lines I want to look at. And then I should see all four of my PO lines here. So I'm going to select all four of those lines. If you have more lines, you can obviously filter. Uh, but I, since I just have those four lines, I'm just going to check those. And then I'm going to go to the supply and demand. And then I'm going to go to a new load. I could go to an existing load with that if I already have one created, but I want to go and create a new load. So I'm going to create a new load. I'm going to specify a load template. Um, I'll just use a 20 foot container and say, okay. And then we should see that create a load. So it's created a load uh, 33 here. So if I go and click on that load ID, I've got all uh, four of my items on here. So remember that this, this A0002 is on two different purchase orders. Now that we've created the load and we've told the system which POs are gonna be on the on the load now we're going to do the receive step so this is going to be a two-step receive process the menu item i'm using is just to receive there is a receive and put away available but today we're going to just do the receive uh, menu item okay so let's take a look and see how we can receive that po next all right so now that we have our load created what i'm going to do is flip over to the dynamics 365 uh, warehousing app and i'm going to go to the inbound menu and I've got a menu item that's created is called Purchase Receive by Load. So if we take a look at that real quick, it's not very complicated. So I'm going to go back to uh, Warehouse Management, underneath Setup, Mobile Device, and Mobile Device Menu Items. If I go down to my uh, Purchase uh, Receive by Load, uh, so this is how, the, how it's set up. So the mode is going to be work. It's going to generate work for put away. And I'm going to do load item receiving in the work creation process. Uh, alternatively, there is a load item receiving and put away if you just want to do a one step. This is more emulating a two step process. Okay. So let's flip back over to our warehouse app and we're going to go purchase order received by load. And basically, all we're going to do is we're going to put in that load ID. So if we go back to our uh, load planning workbench, we can probably see our, our load ID there. So it's going to be that 33. So I'm going to copy that load. Well, I could have gone to all loads if I needed to. And I'm just going to paste that in here. And then it's going to ask me for the item. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to put in item A0001. And that was on our first purchase order. And it's going to it's tell me that one's on purchase order 127. I can click on the details here and see that it's picked it on 127. 
and it does have a quantity of one. So I'm going to say okay to that and okay here. And then the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to do our last item, which if I go back to my purchase order here, that was this L0100. I'm saving that A0002 for last. So I'll go back to item L0100. And that one picked up that it's going to be um, on PO number 128. So we have quantity of one. And then I'm going to say OK. Oh, and it's, I've got an over receiving. It's got me the wrong. So I'm going to switch that unit to each is there. And we'll say OK. All right. So if you, one thing about me, I'll show you the mistakes and the good parts too. So that was a mistake. I needed to override that from a pallet to an each. All right, so that got our um, our two items that are on the different POs. But let's take a look and see what happens when we put our item on that's on the same, on both POs. So I'll put in the A0002 here. And so now it's going to ask me for what PO number I'm receiving against. So I'll receive one against this 127. and put that in there and if I were trying to over receive at this point it's going to tell me that I can't over receive the item got one for the 127 and then I can put in the A0002 now and since I've already received against the 127 that's completely been received and there's only one PO outstanding for it so it's going to default it to the PO that 128 there so one of the takeaways is, you know, if, if the item is on its own PO or there's no other POs left that it's on, the system's going to tell the user what PO it's on. The user doesn't have to specify the PO. So the user only has to specify the purchase order if it's on more than one purchase order because the system wouldn't know which PO it's coming from. Okay, so as you can see, during the receiving process, if the item doesn't exist on any other PO or it only exists on one PO, you're not going to get asked what PO number the item belongs to. But if it's on multiple POs, you are going to get asked which PO this is receipt being received against. So the system knows what PO to be receiving against, okay? So the next step in the process, just as a normal two-step would work, is we're going to use the, the put-away step now. So this is actually the same put-away step. You can use, use the same put-away if you're receiving by load, receiving by normal PO. It doesn't really matter. Work is just getting generated in the background for put away, so you can use the same put away program if you want. Now, this particular one is going to be a user grouping uh, put away. I don't know if I've shown this before on any of the other videos. But what this allows the user to do is to select multiple work. So I can say I'm going to pick this item up, pick this item up, pick this item up, and then I'm going to go put them all away at the same time. So it's a it's a group by user um, option there in the in the menu. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how we do that. All right, so now that we've received those two purchase orders, we can go and take a look at the load again. So let's go back to uh, warehouse management, and then we're going to go under loads and then all loads. And we should see our load ID there of 33. And what we can do, let me just open this one up, and we can go ahead and take a look at the work. So this works exactly like the other PO receiving that you've seen. I'll, I'll put a link to the, to the regular PO receiving uh, video here. But uh, so what that generated was four different uh, work IDs for us to go execute now. So to execute these work IDs, it would be the same as, as the normal. We've shown this before, but let's go ahead and we'll do it again. Cancel out of this. And then we're going to go to the purchase put away. And I've got this set up by user grouping. So it's going to let me do a couple of these at one time. So I'll do the 44 one first. And we'll go ahead and say OK to that. And then we'll, we'll, again, this is user grouping. If you've never seen the user grouping, it's a pretty neat feature. Allows me to just do multiple work IDs all at one time. So there's work ID two is telling me to pick up this item, that L0100. And I'll go ahead while that's processing, I'll come back here and copy this one. And give me another work ID. I'm gonna put in that one. Now it's telling me to get, pick up the A0002. And I'll get this last one. And we'll put the last work ID in there. And now it's telling me to pick up the uh, the other A triple O two. Okay. So now when I'm when I'm done grouping all my work together, I can hit this button right here. Now it's going to tell me to put the uh, 
go to uh, location FL002, put the A triple O two there. Now it's going to tell me in location FL002, put the other A002 there. Now in FL uh, location FL003, it's going to tell me to put the L0100 there. And in location FL001, it's going to tell me to put the A001 there. Okay, so from this point, you would do your normal PO receipt on the purchase order, go into the go into D365 and actually receive the PO. Okay, so now that you've done your put away, the, it's the exact normal process you would normally follow, which is going to D365 and receive the purchase order. I'm not going to show, show that here. We've done that a couple of different times, so no need to show that again. But uh, it's just the normal process from there on out. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give it a like or a thumbs up. That helps the distribution of this video on YouTube. It really helps me out if you would, would go ahead and like it if you enjoyed the video or learned something from it. And as I mentioned earlier, I, I do have a normal Tuesday scheduled upload. So I do these every Tuesday, uh, a new video. So if you want to get notified of that, please subscribe to the channel. And then there's a bell notification that you can click on to actually get notified when a new video gets uploaded. So again, Happy New Year. Hope everybody has a great 2019. Looking forward to a great 2020. And thanks for watching.